Welcome back to Chacha. Today's guest is Dr. Wandi Njoya, and we've been um, considering the implications of this week's developments on the next five years, which is a question I've been asking you on Twitter as well. Um, this is uh, what some of you are saying. I think it's just the way government of Kenya is signaling that they mean business. The art of war is real. Concubines are being forged into warriors. That's from Kaizoku. Um, who says we are the ar architects of our future, nothing is cast in stone. Vitalis, the worst is yet to come. Wait for the prince to be sworn in as a king. Um, Tom Duncan, Kenya will pay painfully for the blood of the um, two girls in the next five years. You remember the baby girl um, um, who was um, apparently clobbered over the head by police and the girl who was playing on the balcony and um, was um, killed by a stray bullet. Um, Wero, Without a doubt, a massive economy um, growth. Uh, Kenyans voted wisely, no more profits of uh, doom. Paul, wait till Baba speaks, Yomjue, conclusively, what it shall portend. Otherwise, the events this far uh, show the dawn of fascism. Nothing but a horror. It's like we're going back to a one party state plus dictatorship. We've reflected on that. Um, you know. President Raleigh should not be referred to as opposition leader. He hasn't accepted defeat of an election which was not free and fair. Um, and again, the activities of this week may further divide the nation. I see the opposition disintegrated. Open and unapologetic dictatorship. Um, the can-do attitude. Again, you see the divisions between our viewers that we've been talking about um, on this panel. So you've talked about, um, you know, President Uhuru, uh, Kenyatta, what sort of advice we would um, give him moving forward. But given the deep schisms in this society, and we've been talking about this over the last 50 years, um, even at independence, you know, a split emerged. It doesn't seem as if we've ever healed from that. Mm -hmm. How do we heal the society comprehensively? I, I had hoped that the TJRC would be part of that package, that we would talk, sit down and talk together about the things that happened to us. But uh, Ruto said during the campaigns that that is not an option. So the, the opportunity for healing has already been shut down. So, you know, I, I really don't understand how we are going to go forward. If it is not politically, it will have to come from we the people. We the people have to, f to, I think, sorry to use the word, but we will have to force the implementation of the TJRC. This should not be an, a, a political option. We sh it should be mandatory because we the people expect it and because it is for our good. It's not for politicians' good. It's for our good, and that conversation has to go on. Um, I also think that we need a national day of mourning, and that is something where we really come together and mourn the things that have happened to us, and not because we come from a certain area. Let us mourn for Wagala. Let us mourn for Kisumu. Let us mourn for Molo. Let us mourn for all the things that have happened to the Kenyan people, and genuinely mourn, not as a way of saying, look what happened to me, the state owes me. But as a way of saying, we are human beings and we can empathize with each other. For me, but those we also two all hurt each other. And that we all also hurt each other. So for me, those two things are not negotiable. Um, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm not saying they will happen, but for me, they are not negotiable. If they are not implemented, I will not read this administration as willing to reconcile Kenyans. Um, Charles, you seem to be amused by these suggestions. Quite interesting suggestions. I would rather go for the latter than the former. The day of mourning rather yes, than the, the day TGRC. of the mourning actually sums up. It's an executive summation of the TJRC. At the end of TJR, I mean, you have the, the reconciliation. This day of mourning would help reconcile all of us. If we start digging into who did what, where, when, to who, I think we'll be more divided than we are. Like uh, Mutegi alluded earlier on, the issue of land is so thorny. We will be evicting people from 10 generations backwards. I don't know where somebody will go. And you'll be telling a grandchild that your great-grandfather was killed by Dr. Wandia's great-grandfather, and that enmity will just strike. So maybe we just look at the reconciliation part. Let's have a national day of mourning, regardless of whether you're from Wagala, Kisumu, Molo, uh, Kiambu, Mombasa, or wherever. Let's come together. We did wrong to you. 
you did wrong to us. We are sorry about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Let's move together as a nation. But the land Opening reforms... Opening the TJRC is a Pandora's box. But if the people who committed these atrocities have not have not been held to account for what they did. So that reconciliation there are people is and the people who have been disenfranchised yes. as a result of historical injustices. injustices. We can't let that continue. But when it comes to land reform, we're not talking about so and so killed my dad and uh, got the title deed. We're talking about, for example, the economy structured on land. I don't think it's right for people to own huge tracts of land and that that land is what gives people access to credit which gives them access to business, to education, to all those things. And the people with small pieces of land or none cannot g gain credit and gain all these other things that you get through land. So we need to tax land, for example. We need to end land holding where people buy land and sell it without having developed it. Yes, land speculation. Those are the, the kinds of healing and reform that we need when it comes to land. It's not looking for who owns the title deed and how did he get it. We need comprehensive reforms which, which remove land speculation and, and well, growth of wealth on, only based on land. Because when you have people getting rich on something they did not create, then you, you, you discourage the opportunities for young people who have great ideas and very energetic hands to, to, to also contribute to the economy through their ideas and their labor. What do other countries do? What does Britain do? Yep. The, 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 the Buckingham Palace, for instance, and the lords who are there, they have a lot of land. Not everybody can... Buckingham I Palace can... is the seat of the monarchy. Yes. Uh, you're talking about the House of Lords. Yes. So um, these people own a lot of land. I agree with you, land should, should be taxed. I agree with you, people should not own land which is empty, doing nothing about it. But not everybody can own land. Kimunya are trying to... to the to, former to minister, some reforms. Yeah, the former minister. He, 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 didn't, he couldn't succeed, succeed because many people, people feel I need, even if it's one eighth, it is mine. Yeah, because that is the model of power that we yes. have seen. If, you, if you're a huge landowner, you gain access to power. And that's what we want to remove. We want to encourage young people to know that if I work hard and if I have good ideas, I can actually make it. I can go to the bank and say, I have this prototype, can you sponsor it? And that is how they can make money. But right now, what do the banks ask for? A title deed. Where are people going to get title deeds? Before you even move to, to ownership of property and wealth and progression economy, uh, Mutegi gave the example of the UK where only a few own land. Mm -hmm. The question is, what about the few who don't own land or the many who don't own land? Do they li lack basic social, social services? services? If you can give the basic social services to mm -hmm. every Kenyan so that every Kenyan feels a right of ownership on this country, every Kenyan gets justice, not mm -hmm. a chicken thief being jailed for 18 months, and, and, uh, and somebody who steals billions walking away because he's perceived innocent until guilty. That is the crank of the matter. And, and when you look at young people, young people are about tw between 20 to 25. That is when people are trying to make a living. What are your basic ex And you want to get married, for example. What are your basic expenses going to be? You're, you need to go to hospital because um, you, you, you have a baby coming, a baby or two coming, and you need education for your, your small kids. So those are the big expenses of young people. If we can sort that out for them, then they wouldn't have to worry about paying these expenses and they can put more of their energy and creativity into getting gainful employment. But right now, we don't have those services and it seems that if you want to get good education and good health care, you have to be rich and to be rich, you need land and the cycle goes Or on. you need to have one of your own in a seat of or, power. Yes. So and you so need that's to why we're we fighting. So this thing that you, this idea, the, the National Day of Mourning that we're talking about, um, is that likely to happen given the current, the, the, the incoming parliament? They're jostling for positions of leadership. Um, the young people whose names no, are being touted. To me, that's a pipe dream. It won't happen. Because whether you are in NASA or whether you are in uh, Ghibli, those people who are, they are, they are, they are landed, they have, they have money. As so they're not going to call the national day of mourning. Mm -hmm. She's calling them the political class. It won't happen. 
and that's why I'm saying the Kenyan people have to force this. And it was half a And, 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 and so my question is, given the incoming parliament we have, mm. uh, which is already jostling for positions of leadership, you know, um, I think the various majority leaders are fine in both chambers, but you know, speakers, I think, might not be. Uh, um, those positions might be up for, for grabs. And you see more young people, more women, um, being um, um, uh, put forward for those positions. Are we likely to see a parliament which would agree with this panel that we do need a national day of mourning, that we do need to heal the schisms within our society? As I said before, if you listen to what Ndwale said, we're going to have, to have a, a terrible parliament. Mm. It will, be it, will, it will be worse than the, 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 the 11th one. Every so parliament is successively worse than its predecessor. That's what I see myself happening. Because they have the majority, they are going to impose themselves. As I said, even if they want to change the constitution so that the President Kenyatta can have a third term, they probably... I have seen people suggest as of now, even before the Sony, we, sh we should go to one party state so that we can do development. So that we can have a chance and we can have a chance to develop the country, to bring more railway to, to Kisumu. Which is nonsense. Mm. How do going, back, going, going back to to single party and, and muzzling the civil society, it's, it's, it's returning back. To I think country. you need to look at the age of the person who is arguing that we go back to a single party state. Maybe he was born after 19. No, they, those are those are those, they're, they're a group I belong to. Those are hardcore jubilee people who were suggesting we can even. Uh, do away with, with, with partisan. And that's, that's why, why you, were just just, you were telling us about another group of people that you were talking to who are wondering how to... <laughs> yeah, and there's country. another group of people who are wondering if Kenya is for them anymore and maybe whether they should mm. exit. There was a joke so about somebody who put Kenya on the OLX platform. Tell so Kenya, <laughs> give everybody their shares. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. that... It has reached that level. It has reached that level. Look, for me, I feel the National Day of Mourning will be will have to force it okay. on politicians the way we forced the new constitution. The politicians resisted the new constitution for 20 years. Eventually the, the, the people of Kenya prevailed. So even the, for this idea and for the TJRC which I think must be done we must we have to force it as the people of Kenya and the constitution our lovely new constitution which is about to which might be mutilated gives us the right to push this agenda and we can you do know, it. If, if, if you ask me about what I would advise uh, President Uhuru when he's sworn in, you know he can implement the TJRC without even saying it. Not one, one thing after the other. Just like they, they, they sat on the uh, internal refugees, one after the other. Although, I, I, it, although I even that was a shock. It was skewed. It, yeah. So he can do that if you want to leave, leave a legacy. You don't even have to have a day of uh, peace. You can go to those fellows who are Magwagala people, sort them out privately. No, we don't want privately or, or, because... Or, or without an, without an we don't want privately because they were killed publicly by public forces. So the whole country needs to mourn yeah. for them. This is not a private arrangement. And in fact, actually, some of us who are concerned about Jubilee coming to power, we were concerned about this privatization of every process. We, we voted for the constitution because we, the people, were at the center of our processes. We want to be back there. We don't want private capital and private businesses running, running the show because that's not what we voted for. Unfortunately, this is a capitalist country. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the rich guys are the ones who... Can't you see who is, who is, who is financing who? When you see, when you see Jubilee, let's, you see... Let's, 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 let's look at our viewers. Huh? Yeah. We have just concluded a successful national election. Why are you so negative about the newly elected government? Stop inciting the nation. Words like mourning are pathetic coming from a lecturer. Why not use consultation, National Day of Consultation? Um, are we prophets of doom only seeing the negative side of the popularly elected government? Let's be positive, professional, and encouraging, focused, and people with good intentions for the country. We are healing, not blaming. That's Bina. Uh, please thank Dr. Njoya for speaking her mind. We need some more of her class here. Kenya is headed for the most difficult period of its history. Who can vote a government where public sector is literally dead and majority of Kenyans cannot afford services in private schools, uh, primary, secondary, university and private hospitals to center. We need leaders like Dr. Njoya who see issues um, positively unlike some analysts. Um, but Emily, Emily is also I think um, going into some uh, tribalism uh, there. Um, yes, that is what our viewers think about uh, mourning.
I it's, think it's very important, mm. and, and uh, I seem to buy into the idea of Dr. Njoya that we need a reconciliation. We don't need... Uh, where I, d I disagree with her is the implementation of TJRC, whether private or public. I think what we know as a country is that we have offended uh, each other in various ways. The government has an obligation to ensure that there is justice for every Kenyan, whether they are the 44% or, or the 54%. The reason why the 54% are celebrating and the 44% are mourning or are sad or are claiming victory that they are saying was denied from them is because of what Mutegi said earlier. The issue of you got it, you have it. And yet we are one country. We need to appreciate the fact that we are one country at the beginning. We need to appreciate the fact that we need each other. You know, sadly enough, Udwak, when we buy sugar, the price of sugar is the same for the 54% the and the 44%. Mm. When there are lack of social amenities, for, I mean, go to uh, Mukuru Kwayaba, for example, and do a, a survey. How many 54% will you find there? And how many 44% will you find there? When you go to Runda, how many 44% will you find there? And how many 54% will you find there? So the government has an obligation to make sure that justice prevails for everybody. But first of all, we have to accept that we have add to each other and we say sorry and we move on. Mm. But do, okay. do, 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 you, do you trust what uh, the president said? He is extending a hand of friendship. He wants cooperation. Now, you are suggesting that you should call uh, Raira on uh, a no, 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 no meeting at it is for either to respond. He hasn't responded and say, okay, is he accepting or uh, not accepting? That can't. It, do you think it's genuine? Well, I, I, I didn't suggest that he should call Raila. I, I actually really suggested, for I actually suggested and said, okay. I mean, other, in, the previous, in the past, mm. they have shouted on the rooftops every time they mm. do something. There would be a letter to the press that the president has invited Honorable Raila Odinga to the State House for a discussion. Mm. If he really is not playing to the public gallery by opening up his arms and accepting my brother, like he, they call him. Uh, they, they call, call each, each other. other. Yeah, mm. My brother, my older brother, my brother here. Why don't we see that in action? Mm. Okay, I, let me just clarify to, to, the, to the viewers what mourning means. Mourning is not whining. Mourning is a deep recognition of the value of a life that is lost. That is why we use it at funerals. When, when a relative yes, dies... As you do that, yes. this, if we continue mourning, we will never move on as a nation. Yes. When a relative dies, we mourn. It is not to say we are whining that, that they are not there. We are recognizing that they lived, that they had an impact in their lives, and that they are human and important enough for us to recognize their lives. And that's why you see, even on Facebook, people remembering relatives, especially parents or, or siblings who had died many years ago. That's what mourning means. And it, this kind of cheap thinking, where we think to recognize a life is whining and being and not moving on, is the kind of thinking we are trying to get out of the education system. We want Kenyans to be more complicated in the way they think and more sophisticated. sophisticated and philosophical. When we mourn, we are not whining and crying. We are recognizing life and crying out to God and recognizing that our humanity still goes even though we want to live for how long, God still has control of our lives. So mourning is a very sophisticated philosophical act. And when we will mourn for the people who have been lost through injustice, we are saying we recognize that you are human, that you lived on this earth, that an injustice was done to you, and that we will not do it again. That is what mourning means. It's not whining and crying. And I feel sad to hear Kenyans thinking like that because it shows that the education system is really not doing its job in making Kenyans think like a civilized country. 54 years later, we should be aware of these things because we also do them in our cultures. When people are, are crying, saying, oh, you have left me, we are recognizing a life that was here because if you don't recognize the life that has gone you will not be able to recognize the life that has come so kenyans we really need to start being 
a civilization and have an education that makes us sensitive to the fact that we are not always in control of everything but in all things we must recognize our humanity and we must recognize the humanity of the people we don't agree with and that is what is missing from this conversation of winning and losing we are not recognizing the humanity of the people who are in sorrow and we are not recognizing that their sorrow but is the legitimate president has said, okay. I, the president and we are has winding said, up extend, yeah. the president has said extend a hand of friendship and we're winding what, up what do you want him to do oh, what do you want him to Hold do on. Make, Mujagi, make this is for you we're winding up this is for you from felix this nation needs more compassion expressed to the hurting Mutegi needs to tone down um, that comes from a viewer so as we wind up and you've talked about an education system that engineers people who are sensitive to um, our you know to the value of life to the value of life our, our diverse expressions of humanity how do we go forward how do we move on if this is just Wednesday right and people on the basis of three days people think that the next five years will be a dictatorship um, will, that we will see more of the same. How do we move on? We move on by picking up videos that went viral from Bombers of Kenya on the, the, the evening that the results were announced shortly into the night. Videos of Aden Dwale, Rachel Shebesh, uh, political players across the divide, hugging and shaking hands and joking and laughing. That is where we need to move on from. And we need to move on from the part where our constitution starts. We, the people of Kenya, recognizing that sovereignty lies in our hands and the fact that we have all the powers. And I'll go to what Dr. Wandia says. We got a new constitution despite the fact that politicians didn't want it because we Kenyans wanted it. If we want good leadership moving forward, if we want progression, if we want recognition of value and sanctity of life, it has to start with us. Okay. Not, not that when, when so-and-so is killed in Meru, it's normal, but when so and so what is killed in he was out on the road. Yeah, and when so and so is killed in Bungoma, it's sad. Mm. And through all lives. If you look at the election map, you see that Jubilee is, is almost all right except certain areas. The part of the president is this. When he informs his government, when he does the appointment of uh, parastatos and ambassadors and whatever, he should follow that land thing and appoint people what they would they call like more face, inclusive, the more face inclusive, of, the face of Kenya. If he does that, all the grumbling may ease, not necessarily end, but you can't, down. you will not have a appointed people token, tokenism. It won't work. He needs to do it thoroughly, drastically, and create a government which is the face of Kenya. Did you okay. say he should just follow that red thing? No, I'm saying. What he meant, I think, was to reach out to yeah, the places yeah, where yeah. the red. Yeah. Um, um, so, look, we'll, we'll wind up. You made a powerful. Um, appeal for the recognition of humanity. So I'll take that as your final, um, your closing thought um, as we wind up because we're out of time. Um, this has been Cheche. Uh, today's guest was Dr. Wandia Njoya, the head of the Language and Arts Department at Daystar University. We thank you for your time. You also heard from our panelists, Mutegi Njao and Charles Odiambo. My name is Udwa Kamimo. Thank you for watching Cheche. Ballot 2017 continues uh, on Citizen TV. So thank you.